Imagine traveling 10,000 years into the future. What would our planet look like? Would there be giant volcanoes? Would most of its surface be covered with oceans? And what if we traveled even farther, one billion years in the future? Now, Earth is about 4.5 billion years old, and when it formed, it looked very different from now. It was an extremely hot world, drowning in molten magma. Then, over the course of a few hundred million years, the planet began to cool. That's when the oceans filled with liquid water appeared on its surface. Heavy elements, initially floating on the surface of this bizarre Earth, started sinking past the oceans and magma toward the center of the planet. Earth became layered. The outermost layer was a solid covering made out of relatively light material, while the denser substances sank to the center of the planet. That's how it all began. Now, speaking about such a distant future and one billion years is no joke, the chances that humans will still be around are very slim. You see, there are quite a lot of threats the human race might face in the process of its development. Climate change, overpopulation, falling asteroids and comets, ice ages, the sun getting hotter. Let's say you've got your hands on a time machine and on your way to see what our planet will look like in a billion of years, you make a few stops. And the first one is 10,000 years into the future. One of the main changes is the appearance of people. Apparently, genetic differences are no longer regional. Such traits as skin tone or hair and eye color are evenly distributed around the globe. 20,000 into the future, and you don't understand people anymore. None of the current languages is recognizable, and the language people speak only has 1% of the present-day vocabulary. Moving further, 50,000 years into the future, and you realize with horror that a new ice age has started. Niagara Falls have eroded, and a day on Earth has increased by one second. Your next stop is 250,000 years from now. The landscape of the planet has changed a bit. For example, a new island has formed in Hawaii. After exiting your time machine 500,000 years into the future, you realize you might have made a mistake. Fires are raging all over the planet and the air is nearly unbreathable. The reason is a giant asteroid. People didn't manage to prevent it from hitting Earth. You hop into your time machine and set the timer to one million years from now. It seems you're out of luck. This time, it's a massive supervolcano eruption, spewing out hundreds of cubic miles of ash. It's already produced enough lava to fill 75% of the Grand Canyon. Two million years into the future, and people have created settlements all over the solar system. Humans look different on different planets and moons since their bodies have adapted to particular conditions existing in those regions. 50 million years into the future, and you see that Earth is still changing. A massive part of eastern Africa has broken off, forming a new ocean basin. Africa has crashed into Eurasia and closed off the Mediterranean Sea. A new mountain range, higher than Mount Everest, has formed between these two landmasses. Also, Mars has collided with its moon and got a cool ring system, just like Saturn. You make a stop 600 million years into the future and find out that a gamma ray burst has occurred around 6,500 light years away from Earth. Luckily, it hasn't hit our planet. Otherwise, there would no longer be the protective ozone layer and it would have caused a mass extinction. Also, the moon is now so far from Earth that there are no more total solar eclipses. And now, your final destination. Earth one billion years from now. With bated breath, you leave your time machine and freeze in shock. Our once beautiful planet has turned into a lifeless desert. The levels of carbon dioxide have dropped dramatically, and there's no photosynthesis anymore. It means that free oxygen and ozone have disappeared from the atmosphere, and there's no more complex life on the planet. Plus, the sun's luminosity has increased by 10%, making average temperatures on Earth rise at least twice. You feel as if you're standing in a giant, damp greenhouse. The oceans have evaporated, leaving a few small pockets of water at the poles. What about people? You won't find them on Earth. 
By now, they have already colonized some faraway planets and faraway galaxies. You should probably leave this inhospitable world too. So here's the scoop. You're not even born yet, but your parents already know what you're going to look like. In the year 3021, DNA tech is so advanced, they can basically pre-program a person. Eye color, hair, face, and nose shape, lips, finger length, body structure – it's as simple as selecting from a drop-down menu, kind of like creating your own character in an RPG. Everyone looks… Uh, great. No more diets, no more gyms, and a healthy body for everyone. All it takes is a little gene modification and a special liquid full of a couple of million nanobots. Bioengineering and medtech allow people to change their bodies and minds whenever they want. Improved hearing? Done. Now you can hear a fly rub its paws together from the other side of the room. Not that you'd want to. Nanorobots can turn your eyes into binoculars with a 100 times zoom. From your 160th floor apartment, you can read the nutrition info on that wrapper lying on the ground. You gotta get a life, pal. Wanna fall out of a window and land unharmed? Nanorobots can make it happen. Millions of tiny robots can be sent to cover your bones and muscles if you want to lift a car with one hand. Superheroes aren't really a big thing anymore. Anyone can get superpowers in 3021. And say goodbye to spending years learning a new profession. You don't need to go to college to find a good job. Just download all the skills and knowledge you need. Medical nanorobots can get into your brain and improve your mood. You can become joyful, angry, funny, sad, all in a matter of seconds. The physical brain isn't a mystery anymore, nor is the subconscious mind. That means no more psychologists or psychiatrists. And solving your personal problems? Easy. You have special lenses built into your eyes linked to AI. You can see an analysis of your mind, and AI will even suggest a strategy for improving it. Not getting enough vitamin C? You'll get a notification. Need more protein? Notification. Need… you'll get it. It's awesome! Amazingly, nanorobots open access to your memories. Watch them like movies, any period of your life, any time you want. You can see happy moments in perfect detail, or permanently delete anything you'd rather not see anymore. Genetic engineering makes it possible to create not only modified humans, but also animals. Scientists bring back extinct fish, birds, and mammals. You can even grow your very own pet from scratch. A dog, cat, small elephant, dinosaur, whatever you want. And if you don't like cleaning up a mess, pick up a pet robot that looks and acts just like a real animal, without all the uh, annoying stuff. In 3021, your body can live for 200 years, but your mind? Forever. You can upload your brain data to the cloud. Your way of thinking, habits, attitude, character, memories, your entire personality can be coded and uploaded. You can encode your mind now and download it into a new, modified body, say after you hit your 189th birthday. And this new body doesn't need food or water, only energy. In the future, no one goes hungry. People travel around the galaxy in style. You can upload your consciousness to a computer and beam it over to your other biomechanical body that you had shipped to another planet. If you've got enough money, you can buy several bodies and scatter them in different parts of the galaxy. Then, on your day off, you can teleport your mind to another planet just to get a bit of peace and quiet. If you want to unload your consciousness and download it again in a few hundred years, you've got a choice to make. Be in a hundred-year-long dream or spend the time flying around in an infinite network. You can even put your mind on the internet and do whatever you want. Some people even choose to live inside the web just for a year or two. Matrix, anyone? People have learned to change their surroundings with the help of utility fogs. Imagine a robot the size of a human cell. This robot has several limbs, can change color, temperature, and can connect with other tiny robots. Utility fogs are just trillions of these little guys. They cling to each other and can create any object you want, 
or they can turn into a sort of hologram, perfect for video calls. The fog can take on any shape. It can be a cup, a painting, a car, a bigger robot, just not anything living. But just because it's the future doesn't mean everyone gets to have fun. This fog tech is crazy expensive. The fogs can create buildings. You can wake up in your beautiful house, go to work, and the house gets automatically folded up and transformed into a small suitcase. Hey there, George Jetson! You can travel around the galaxy with it and transform it into any home you want. Suddenly feel like having a bigger kitchen, different furniture, a rooftop pool, a slide from your bedroom to the kitchen? <laughs> no problem! And inside your house, things are way different. You don't have to clean up anymore. Dust, dirt, and grime are all taken care of by nanorobots. You're watching a sad movie, crying, going to town on a Kleenex. Then you just toss the used tissue over your shoulder. Right where it lands, your utility fog turns into a small trash can with wheels. It zips over to the kitchen, dumps out the Kleenex, and poof, it disappears. What about an after-movie snack? For centuries, pizza drones have been flying through the streets. At one point, it got a bit ridiculous. There were too many of them. They started crashing into each other and into passing birds. Now, you just order a sandwich or pasta through your special lenses, and the food gets 3D printed. When resources on planet Earth began to run out, people colonized the Moon and Mars. Then, the big breakthrough. A thermonuclear engine, capable of trans migra nuclear flaba flaba. Hey, let's just call it a teleporting device. People sent AI robots over to build cities, roads, electrical grids, and water filtration plants. Then, people began to move there permanently. Everyone born on Mars or the Moon was different from us Earthlings. Mars, for example, gets less sunlight than Earth. So, Martians have wider pupils. That means if they ever come back to Earth, they basically have night vision. But Martians, and people on the Moon, what, lunatics? Have weaker bones. Luckily, they have those handy nanorobots to help them. But with these new discoveries come new risks and dangers. Uploading your consciousness can go horribly wrong. You risk facing virtual viruses that can imprison you in a virtual cage. Many attackers use programs that can erase your mind, just like a plain old file on your desktop. Those nanorobots, they can still be defective sometimes, and instead of upgrading your body, yeah, not great. Moving to other planets is crazy risky. We sometimes have to abandon cities on Mars because there's suddenly a 300-year-long dust storm. And space travel, sorry to tell you, never stops being dangerous. Even in 3021, there are loads of forces in the universe that scientists still don't understand. Say you buy a modified robo-body and send it to a beautiful new Martian city. You're on Earth, and you upload your consciousness to a computer and send it on over to the new body. The weather is perfect, the sunsets are epic. Suddenly, a huge asteroid smashes into your house. These kinds of things happen in 3021. The way we live now seems exotic to the people of the future. To breathe and live in a natural body, to eat natural food, to take a real water shower, to learn new info by reading – that stuff freaks them out. At some point, humans learn to travel through time, but immediately ban the new technology. Humanity's living in a utopia, apart from the occasional asteroid ruining that robot body you saved up for a whole year to buy and any change in the past could mean the end of it. Instead of traveling to the past or the future, people create virtual simulations of their favorite time periods. The most popular simulations? Just going back in time and living a day as an ordinary person in 2021. Powerful quantum computers analyze your genes, calculate what you would have looked like, and recreate an exact you. Ah, life was so much simpler a thousand years ago. Me? I'm going to 1977. Disco, the Bee Gees, glitter balls, the golden age of music. For some of us. Imagine that it's the year 2025, and our planet has completely changed. Rising sea levels, extreme weather, 
and the ocean becoming more and more acidic are just some of the problems people have been dealing with for years. But in one of the world's largest coastal cities, the situation has become too serious. It was a sunny day in June when a massive earthquake shook the city to its core. The ground beneath people's feet heaved and shook, and buildings swayed dangerously. People ran through the streets in panic, trying to find safety. But as soon as the ground settled, the inhabitants of the city realized the real danger. A wall of water, almost 100 feet high, was rushing toward the city, propelled by the force of the earthquake. The tsunami hit the city with unimaginable force. Entire neighborhoods were wiped out, and thousands of people lost their lives. But here's where things get interesting. In the aftermath of the disaster, the city's authorities realized that they couldn't just rebuild the city as it was before. They needed to be better prepared for the next potential disaster. And so they came up with an incredibly ambitious project to build an underwater city. The goal was to create a self-sufficient, sustainable city beneath the ocean surface that could withstand any natural disaster. The underwater city would be powered by renewable energy using tidal power and underwater solar panels. It would be designed to withstand extreme weather and would have its own emergency response systems. The project attracted some of the world's top scientists, engineers, and architects. They worked tirelessly to design the city and carefully considered every aspect of the project. The underwater city would have everything that a typical city had, from schools and hospitals to stores and restaurants. There would be underwater farms where fish and other marine creatures could grow. The city would even have its transportation system, advanced submarines and underwater tunnels connecting different parts of the city. The project became a shining beacon of hope for people. It showed that even in the face of disaster, we could come together to create something amazing. But as time went on, the project no longer seemed so perfect. The cost of the project turned out to be higher than planned. There were also concerns about how long such a project would exist. After all, the ocean is very unpredictable. And still, the team of scientists and engineers never gave up. After years of trial and error, they finally created the perfect underwater city. A marvel of engineering. A self-contained ecosystem that could sustain people indefinitely. The buildings were constructed from a material that could withstand the immense pressure at the bottom of the ocean. And the city itself was powered by a network of advanced hydroelectric turbines. It wasn't long before the first wave of colonists arrived at the underwater city. There were different people in this group, and each of them had their own reasons for choosing to live in this new world beneath the waves. Some were adventurers seeking a new world to explore, while others were hoping to escape natural disasters raging on dry land. But despite their differences, all these people shared a common goal, to build a new society, one that was in harmony with the natural world. The underwater city flourished, and new discoveries were made every day. The colonists developed new technologies and ways to tame the power of the ocean. They learned to farm the sea and started cultivating underwater gardens that provided them with a steady food supply. But living underwater was challenging. People felt isolated and even claustrophobic. The situation came to a head when a group of activists started to protest against the city's expansion plans. They argued that the underwater city was a threat to the environment it was meant to protect and that the colonists should focus on reducing their impact on the delicate underwater life. The protests sparked a heated debate among the colonists. Some of them argued that the survival of the city depended on its growth and expansion. Others claimed that the city needed to prioritize the protection of the environment above all else. In the end, a compromise was reached. The city would continue to expand, but the main priority would be sustainability and a responsible attitude to nature. The colonists would do their best to reduce their impact on the environment by using new technologies and following strict conservation rules. And they would also remember the importance of protecting the ocean and its fragile ecosystem. Years went by, and the underwater city continued to thrive. New generations of colonists were born, and they grew up in a world entirely different from the one their ancestors had known. They never saw the world on the surface, but appreciated the beauty and complexity of the underwater world they called home. And as the years passed, the city became a symbol of hope for a world struggling with the devastating effects of climate change. It showed that despite all difficulties, people could come together to create a better world. It is a reminder that the future is not set in stone and that we can build it sustainably and in harmony 
with the natural world. That's it for today.